This is for the cool Shalom family, hi, it's me Chichi, the Nigerian Empress. Thank you for tuning in again to the Chichi channel. Okay, so a quick message to my Lux family. Now, the reason why I haven't been making Lux videos is that you guys are not talking back to me. You're not letting me know what kind of videos you want. The truth of the matter is that a lot of those videos, especially a couple of them, happened because some people were asking questions. Now, the thing is that there are so many people on the internet, especially on YouTube, talking about locks the care of it and all of that so i just feel like it's kind of redundant repeating what they're already talking about so if you would let me know what kind of things you want to see then i'll make those videos so please talk back to me so that we can take it from there all right yeah thank you for that thank you for listening now the thing is i had a couple of conversations with some of my sisters and friends in you know past couple of weeks some things I said were kind of misunderstood, especially the number one point in the six things every queen should know about herself. That is the fact of you being an individual. I think that uh, people are thinking I'm saying that you are by your own and by yourself in this world. But that's not what I'm trying to say. My mom used to say something when we were growing up. She used to say, put a price on yourself. I never really did ask her what she meant by that because maybe she was very scary. <laughs> but yeah, as time went on, I, I kind of understood, kind of had a small idea of what she was trying to say. But I think she was trying to say, respect yourself. Because if you respect yourself, then other people will respect you. And I will never forget something she did when we were growing up, you know, in Nigeria. If your birthday fell on a school day, wear your party clothes, you get a cake, you get gift pack that you're going to pack for your friends. So we're busy trying to tell mommy that, you know, mommy, but that's how we do. And she's like, that's why do you want that? And I, you know, I explained to her that that's what everybody does. You know, everybody wears, she goes, everybody. So you're going to do it because everybody does it. So if they're jumping inside, the if they are jumping inside pool, you two will follow them and jump. And she was like, oh, because everybody's doing it, is all you're going to do. That is the very reason why you're not going to do it. And for real, though, she did not do cake. She did not do, she just did choco bites. <laughs> Those of you in Nigeria who knew, she just did choco bites that we're going to give. I don't know if she did cake. And she made me wear my screen uniform. Oh, my God. It was terrible. And then maybe Coke cake. My mom did not do cocoa. She did maybe Capri Sun. Ah, that's my mother. It was a very funny birthday that year, you know, but that was just my mom. And every time you come and tell her, oh, we're doing stuff because everybody are. Ah. You should know that that must never come out of your mouth because that's the end of that thing. You know? That became kind of my running principle. I will not do stuff because everybody's doing it. And that's the very reason why I won't do it because everybody's doing it. So that's what I meant by being an individual. An individual is somebody who has a mind of their own. You can think for yourself. You're not letting society dictate to you who you should be, who you are. Okay, it's a celebration of your uniqueness. So that's what being an individual is. And then society, your upbringing, tradition, your environment also forms part of you. So for instance, I'm Nigerian born and raised and Nigerians, we believe that we know everything. We are cocksure about, you know, <laughs> we're overtly confident, you know, that's, that's pretty much who we are. And also the fact that, you know, Nigerian men are also very aggressive, very appreciative. So I grew up, you know, when you go out of the house, you're sure to have a man look at you, smile at you, you know, give you a second, third, fourth look. Sometimes they will even stop the car just to talk to you. So that's the kind of upbringing I had. So that kind of helped with my sense of self that you appreciated. Even in Saudi Arabia, when I was where everybody's holy at the Holy Spirit, you still had guys looking at you, checking you out. So when I got to you know Canada and I was walking on the street that people are not looking at me. <coughs> Cars are not stopping. Hello. Men are not stopping to say something about me, not smiling, not talking to me. Mm. You know, I walk past a guy and he's practicing he practically didn't see me so i started to feel like ah, am i ugly or something let's let me go ugly in this place i guess i couldn't accept that so i told myself that it's because you don't like black girls here so trying to settle in and understand the new system because things were different from back home you know 
especially since I was there for school, the educational system is different from ours, man. So trying to understand it, trying to relate to people, and then after a while, I became ostracized. That ah, this girl, you're too loud, you're too aggressive, you're too kind of threatening. So I guess I kind of scared them a little bit. So I was just there by myself, and I kind of was forced to like my own company and do things by myself because that's the way i eventually became treated you know alienated from everybody else yeah, okay whatever you know and then my family is not with me my husband is not with me my children are not with me i don't have any friends here except for the ones that i eventually made in church so you're yeah, living like that along the line one night i was finally able to figure out this particular terrible assignment that we had given i was so excited about it oh i was singing i was escaping i was ah, man. walking home and you know happy that okay i'm slowly grabbing a hug of how things are done here you know and then uh, all of a sudden this man walks up to me and says oh my god you're stunning <laughs> okay i laughed i looked at the person who was a caucasian man and i was like surprised okay thank you and i noticed how very comfortable he was with me talking to me and my experience with them is they're not very comfortable talking to a black person i asked him where he was from he grew up in one of those either zimbabwe or zambia one of those central south african countries so that explained why he was so comfortable talking to me and that was it bye bye I gave him my number i didn't expect he was going to call again oh i just thought oh thank you for making my night even better than it was Fast forward to like the weekend, I get a call from him. Oh, hi. He's trying to check if I gave him a fake number or not, whatever. So <laughs> we're talking and I'm like, okay, very nice guy. And then somehow the conversation goes to him talking about Nigerians and the Nigerian scam. Anyway, he's going on and on and on about it and he's being so rude. He just practically called us a bunch of money grabbing, greedy fiends. I don't know what he was expecting me to say when he said that and all i said was like you know what this thing only works when people are greedy because if you're not greedy it won't catch you it's like hey i said yeah it won't catch you you know what i have things to do because he he was i didn't like the way he was talking about my people my country i don't care who you are who, who do you think you are don't talk about nigeria like that if you're not nigerian get out of here the next week he was going to call me back again what rubbish and i wasn't even looking forward to talking to him anymore so weeks later I get a call from him again. Oh, what are you doing? Do you want to hang out? So it's like Saturday evening. Do you want to hang out? And I was working on this assignment and my brain was gassy, seriously. Oh, man, I'm nearly quick. I said, sure, why not? And then we're walking and he's talking, asking questions. You know how you're settling in? Okay. Because in my experience, they're not trying to know you. So this person trying to know you was kind of nice. I wouldn't lie. So we're talking and I talked, told him about a project I was working on. And he's like, okay, you know, you could do it like this. You could do it. And I was really grateful for the idea. But I noticed that he kept insisting I should do it a particular way, the way he was saying it. Like kind of washing down my own ideas and I must do it the way he said I should do it. Ah, okay. Sorry, sir. Then he goes grocery shopping and he's like, would you like to pick some things? And I'm like, you, that are busy talking about Nigerians as if they're money grabbing. Fee. No, not me. Mm, even if I was dying of hunger, which I wasn't. No, thank you. He's like, sure, you sure? I'm like, I guess he was surprised that I wasn't picking. Like, no, thank you. I don't. Thank you very much. I don't know which Nigerians or black girls he had been around. I don't understand why he was talking the way he was. So I should ask I should, I should be apologizing. Ah, uh, then you don't know. You have not met Nigerians then. <laughs> My ideas. I noticed that he's not really paying attention when I'm talking because he did most of the talking. And then when I'm talking, he will be saying things like, shh, shh, me, shh. I do not. So I'm not trying to do the black, black, black and proud thing. I'm just like, okay. Because he's talking about LSD. For those of you who know me, I have this unhealthy curiosity about the hallucinogenic drugs. So I'm trying to find out how I can get me some and try them out. Because <laughs> I'm like, LSD, are you working for the government or how you having access to those kind of drugs? Brother man, <laughs> can a sister have some of that? <laughs> and he's like, no, you know, mm -mm, this one you have to call. Hey, you have to play a schedule. You know, for the weekend, weekend, I'm thinking weekend, I'm perfect, I can do weekend. Okay, and then when you do that, you have to come on, you have to do it with somebody in my head. I'm still trying to crack my head. Who will I do it with? Hey, I'll do it by myself. Hey, but you so, and the only way that works is that you have to do it with me. I said, oh, mm, with you. Oh, well. And then you have to come and stay with me for the weekend. Excuse you. <laughs> eh? 
He said, no, well, you can give me this drug. I can't try it in my room. He said, no, 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 no. You have to. <laughs> From where to where? <laughs> so, yeah. so it was getting cold and, oh my God. And she, she kept telling me, yeah, shouting, yeah, shouting. Okay, sure, we can go inside so we can talk. You know, so I was trying to invite me because in my head, we were standing at the, at the entrance of my apartment building. I was kind of comfortable about that, you know. So let's... Come in. Come in, my child. We mustn't lurk in doorways. It's rude. One might question your upbringing. <laughs> you know, so let's go inside. Guess I've been so naive about the whole thing. And you should have seen how his eyes shone. They're inviting me in. And I suddenly had a check in my spirit that, ah, no, Joma, don't let this man come into your house. In my head, I was like, why? Why not? I mean, it's like, no, 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 your roommates might misunderstand. I mean, you're having a conversation, but your roommate must misunderstand why you are bringing a man into your house. Like, ah, it's true, it's true, it's true. And you, and you know what? Uncle, you know, just stay out here. Don't worry. I think we'll disturb my roommate. Ah, you should have seen how his face fell. Like, ah. You know, and I'm still trying to find out how I'm going to get this draw. It's like, you know, we just cost the chase that, ah, are we having sex or not? Eh? Just like that. In Nigeria, men don't talk like that, at least in my experience. And they have a lot, a lot more finesse and they are more respectful about it. So I just talk to somebody like that. I don't know who he had been, what kind of black girls he had been used to. Ah, uh -uh, you won't talk to me like that. And then I said, ah, uh -uh, no. He's like, ah, surprise, like, why not? Like, you know, I'm married. I said, I know you're married and all that, but, you know, don't you play? No, I don't play. Like, what the? <laughs> so it's like, okay, yeah, we can kiss, we can touch, we can... Mm -hmm. No, I'm not doing it. And I was like, we can just be friends. Yeah, okay. You know, okay, so good night, good night. And that was it. I never heard from him again. I guess I would have been crushed if I didn't have a sense of self or a sense of who I was. Mm -mm, I wasn't going to play that. To hell with you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. How dare you? Who are you? So I don't know, maybe he felt I should be grateful that a white man paid attention to me, so I should. What rubbish. No, 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 no. Being who you are is a celebration of your uniqueness. It's about, oh my God, I am all that and a bag of chips. Yes. You have a mind of your own. You can think things through for yourself. Okay. You can read and decide that this is what I want to be. No human being has the right to detect to you who you are supposed to be. No, 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 no. Your parents are there to guide you. Yes, but you also have a mind of your own. That is why the Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God. You know, you do the studying yourself. You have the responsibility to develop that mind of yours. Okay, so that is what being an individual is. Finding out that thing that makes you different, that separates you from the crowd. So that in the event or the in time that one day you are away from your family, your environment, whatever you're familiar with, who are you then? Because if you haven't made up your mind who you are, anybody can do so. Like for instance, white man decided that, okay, because you don't want to sleep with me, you are crap. Maybe to have crushed somebody else or you feel, okay, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe to keep him around maybe i should just do it so that what rubbish no enough of that though so when i was talking about being an individual that is what i was talking about finding out that thing that makes you you because everybody has a gift even if it's just one you have something that makes you different from everybody else and you have that responsibility to find that thing out polish it to the glitters in the sun just like beyonce you know she sings, she dances, she writes songs. That's far as I'm concerned. She's a female version of Michael Jackson. But she's been able to find that thing that she's good at, polished it, and has been able to separate herself from everybody else. That is what makes her special. Okay? That is what being an individual is. So don't think it's about you just being alone and, you know, you have to figure stuff out yourself. There's also that. But the individual thing I was talking about is about a celebration of you. Who are you? Let's get a sense of who you are. Yeshua said something, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The truth is, you can't love anybody unless you love yourself. So if you have not accepted who you are, you haven't owned who you are, how then can you love somebody else? You can't love anybody unless you've been able to love yourself. That is the honest truth. So find out who you are, flaws and all, love yourself. Build on your weaknesses because everybody does have weaknesses. Nobody's perfect. Build on that and then just celebrate who you are 
And yeah, let's go from there. I don't know if this makes any sense to anybody, but yeah, thank you for listening. And so until the next video, Shalom family. You being so cool, this is for the cool.